Hello, and thank you for joining me for Revit Essentials Modeling and Documenting MEP Systems. When I think about Essentials, I think about critical information that is vital to learning and or performing any given task. The Essentials are necessary for your success in whatever you do. When we're talking about software, one of the Essentials is knowing where to go to find things. If you don't know your way around the user interface, you're not going to be able to take advantage of all the tools that are available. You can break the user interface down into nine parts. Starting from the top left, moving right and down, you have the application menu, the quick access toolbar, the info center, the ribbon, the options bar, the properties palette and project browser, the drawing area, the view control bar, and the status bar. The application menu provides access to common file actions such as open, save, export, and print. Options control things like how often you get notified to save your file and where you store template files for project startup. Moving over to the quick access toolbar, we see a number of tool icons. These are tools that you use all the time and are placed here so you can get to them, well, quickly. This toolbar can be customized easily for tools you want to add or remove. Simply select the drop down arrow to show all the tools on the toolbar and uncheck the tools you don't want to see. To add a tool to the toolbar, simply right click it and choose Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Removing it is just as simple. The Info Center, among other things, uh, will provide you with sources to product related information. Clicking on the Communication Center will give you a list of links to product related blogs and announcements from Autodesk. You can type a keyword or a phrase in here and it links you to Revit's online help database, which is very robust. You sign into Autodesk 360 to access online services that interact with your desktop software. The question mark icon shows information about your installed version of Revit as well as access to the help. Of course, the quickest way to help is the F1 key. Now the X icon is a link to the Autodesk App Store. So if you're looking for an add-in to help you bump up your productivity, the App Store is the best place to find it. There are a ton of great apps that can really boost your productivity. The ribbon is the meat and potatoes of the user interface. It's where you'll spend most of your time because that's where all the modeling tools are. The ribbon is made up of tabs along the top and each tab has a number of panels on it. Each panel contains tools specific to the title of the panel. For example, the HVAC panel contains tools to model an HVAC system. The options bar is located underneath the ribbon and quite frankly overlooked much of the time. It displays options related to the element you're placing or editing. If I select this duct, notice the information I get on the options bar. I can change the width, the height, or even offset it from its current location. The Properties palette provides you access to the properties of elements and views in Revit. This dialog is modeless, which means it's accessible without having to click a button to open it. The Project Browser, also modeless, uh, contains a listing of all views, elements, schedules, and sheets in the model. Double-clicking on the view title will open that particular view. Now the current view displays bold in the Project Browser. The drawing area is where you model elements and view all aspects of your model. Uh, each view has its own set of graphics overrides and its properties are controlled in the properties palette. In the upper right hand corner you'll notice the navigation bar. Now this tool does what the title implies. It allows you to navigate in the view. Now for a 3D view like this one you can orbit, zoom, rewind, and pan. Um, now, I personally don't use this feature very much because I find the tool a bit cumbersome. And quite frankly, there are better, easier ways to navigate in the view. 
For example, holding down the wheel on the mouse will pan. Rolling the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. And, you know, honestly, the only aspect of the navigation bar you can't do from your mouse is rewind. Um, also, pressing the mouse wheel down while pressing the shift key will orbit. Now, I also use keyboard shortcuts to perform all zoom functions that I find useful. So ZR for zoom region, ZA for zoom all, and ZF for zoom to fit. Uh, if I want to zoom to the previous pan or zoom, uh, I'll just right click and pick that from the right click menu. Oh, and a third way to zoom all is double clicking the mouse wheel. Yes, if you were unaware, you can press the mouse wheel and you can double click it and that will perform a zoom all feature. So go ahead, play around with the middle mouse wheel, uh, panning and zooming using your shift key. This is probably a good stopping point for this video clip. Now there's another big part of the drawing area you're going to want to see. So join me in the next video where we'll talk about visibility graphic overrides and plus a few more things about the user interface. Thanks for watching.